This is a presentation of a young woman uh, who was noted to have a pulsatile mass in the right temple, be slowly enlarging for years. Uh, on physical examination, it was um, slightly elevated. Uh, and as you can see here, um, in a lateral view and in the MR scan, you can see a little a vascular collection um, in the right uh, frontal area. An MR basically showed uh, an unremarkable intracranial MRA, however it showed soft tissue prominence with some superficial prominent vessels in the right supraorbital region uh, corresponding to the location of the AVM. There was also some asymmetry in the size of the ophthalmic artery, it being bigger on the right than on the left. Um, she was otherwise asymptomatic and to show you what it looked like uh, in close up you can see there's some skin discoloration in this area and slight uh, tender protuberance in that right frontal area. Um, we opted to, we thought this was a racemose arteriovenous malformation and we went through the groin, paste a guide sheath in the uh, carotid artery, access the temporal artery and you can see there's asymmetry um, in that the superficial temporal artery and the frontal branches are actually enlarged. Uh, in this AP view you can actually see early venous filling. Um, and of course it was in the proximity to her superorbital area, so there was concerns for whether there was any retrograde falling down uh, into her eye. So we then advanced the microcatheter over an O1 O wire out into the nida, so it was way out into that uh, frontal region. And that allowed us to inject dye and uh, specifically identify where the venous connections were. There were no obvious uh, collaterals uh, which are communicating uh, through her orbit and into the intracranial circulation. And we thought it was reasonably safe to approach this and to go ahead and embolize uh, the arterial venous malformation. And you look for any evidence basically of communication between the supraorbital and ophthalmic arteries um, uh, and we would continue to have to evaluate this as we went on to uh, embolize this. Here you can see again following the flow patterns as they fill. Now one of the useful techniques if you're going to uh, embolize these is to use road mapping. For example you're in injecting onyx uh, if you go on roadmap function, it subtracts the old onyx out so you can actually see where the new onyx or glue you know, happens to be going uh, as you actually uh, go ahead and do this injection. And so this is a technique which we were going to use. The plan was to go ahead and actually inject this uh, with uh, onyx. Uh, and we set up essentially to do that with all the uh, concerns and limitations there are basically around prepping and using onyx. So what you're going to see now is where the microcatheter is tracking way out basically into that branch. Um, and here's a better view. We can see the microcatheter tracking out as we're uh, mapping out uh, really what those collaterals were. Um, as we look laterally on this fluoroscopic image, you can see the, the five French catheters and the superficial temporal artery and the frontal branch is, has been catheterized. Now, one of the techniques uh, which has been developed to limit uh, the collateral embolization um, is uh, the so-called cookie cutter technique, which is what we're going to demonstrate here. Again, you can see the, the, some of the venous uh, drainage which is occurring. The cookie cutter technique simply involves taking a off-the-shelf cookie cutter, uh, it gives you different shapes, you sterilize it and you actually apply it around the lesion. So the microcatheter is the inside of the cookie cutter. Here you can see the fingers are actually applying to applying around the lesion and we're actually injecting the onyx slowly inside uh, the cookie. Uh, the cookie cutter and that limits, uh, gives it time for the onyx to harden and prevents it from going and embolizing anywhere else. And so you can, this, using this technique you can actually serially embolize with relative safety any lesion in which you can control the boundaries and prevent this embolization from occurring. Here you can see the, the cookie cutter in place basically taped on the patient's forehead so you could you could put pressure on and off basically as you needed it. And this allowed us to actually go ahead and here you can see we're injecting inside the cookie. Um, and you, uh, only problem of course you get a little bit of radiation to your hands. You don't want to do this obviously for any length of time but it allows you to limit the spread of the onyx as we actually go ahead and inject it. And a completion angiogram, once we let the, the uh, uh, solidify, showed complete ablation and you can see the patient awoke neurologically intact. Uh, didn't have any staining of the skin, which one might ask, and it completely resolved. Thank you very much for your attention.